Hey guys, how's it going? So in this tutorial, I'm going to show you guys how to calculate FWHM for the various peaks in your XRD pattern. Now, the uh, FWHM is given by a formula, something like this. This is called the Scherer formula. So here, beta is your full width at half maxima, and it is directly proportional to 2 theta, or dependent on that then it is equal to k lambda by l cos theta where l is the crystallite size therefore the peak width is needed to calculate the crystallite size for your sample and that is what i'm going to show you how to do that and the factor k here is you know it can take several values depending on the type or the shape and size of your sample so it can either take 0 0.89 0 0.9 4 and many people just take it to be 1 it doesn't really matter that much then lambda is the wavelength of your x-ray and cos theta here theta would be the angle or the position angular position of the peak and beta that is the full width at half maxima or the FWHM should be in radians so many people make the mistake even I used to do that or did that one time at least that I took beta in you know degrees so you have to take that in radians and another way to calculate the crystallite size could be to use the integral breadth instead of FWHM and that can also be done pretty easily but I will show that in some other video and this video will be dedicated to only um, you know learning how to calculate the FWHM so how to calculate the FWHM would be to use some kind of software that performs a Gaussian fit for my XRD pattern and in my case I'll be using origin and so you should you know uh, if you don't have origin then you should get origin or maybe watch some of the tutorial because this one is based on origin so um, another thing to know is that I I'm not sure about that but I don't think that origin version less than 8 or 8.5 can do this I have got origin 9 but you know just make sure that you get some latest origin to do this because I'm not sure if versions before 8.5 could do it. I mean they do have um, you know wizard that performs a fit but I'm not really sure how well that you know is. Okay so enough with the chit chat and now let's begin to calculate the FWHM for my XRD pattern. So I have my you know XRD data in this notepad file or txt file. So let me just copy all that um, you know. Okay so let's copy all the data and now we will plot it. Oh whoops I'm gonna have to repeat that again. Okay so just copy all the data down till the very end press control C and paste it in the Excel window okay so now I have the data okay so just um, what I did was I press control and selected the two columns and right clicked on them then went to plot and went to line then line so that will plot your XRD pattern Okay, so here is the XRD pattern. As you can see, I have a ready-made theme that shows two theta here, intensity here, and you can just label whatever you want here. Okay, so let's say I want to get the FWHM for this particular peak, right? This is the highest intensity peak, and it should be noted that to get, uh, you know, the crystallite size, it is advised to get the width of the most intense peaks of your XRD pattern. So just press here to scale into this peak okay and make sure you have some of the background radiation on the both sides and then go to analysis then to peaks and baselines then multiple peak fit and open the dialog okay so in this dialog what you need to do is you need to select a peak function and I'll be using Gaussian function okay uh, it will prompt you to double click to pick the peaks in my case it's just one so I'll just go here ahead and here I'll double click it 
and then open n lift that is that stands for nonlinear fit okay so here it is showing you various parameters like base center amplitude FWHM etc now what you need to do is you need to click here that is fit until converged and voila your Gaussian fit is ready and you can get the parameters from here that is the FWHM for this particular fit is 0 0.19842 okay then and you know this you know dialog box also shows you the kind of function that you know you are using to fit your data and you can use many of the functions by you know just going to settings and picking up some other function and then, you know fitting your data so anywho what we needed was have to blue HM using the Gaussian fit and we got it so just go ahead and press done and it will generate a good you know nice table for you so this is some statistical data like the r square values etc and um, a lot of data is here and you can just you know check the fitted points also here then i don't need that I, all i need is you know the plot right here so i have got that so here i have my you know equation of the Gaussian fit, the R reduced chi-square value, the adjusted R square, etc., and all the parameters for the fit. Okay, so that's how you calculate the Gaussian fit for a particular peak. And in case you wanted to do a lot of peaks at once, then what you could have done was, you know, just okay, so to illustrate that let me just create a another graph. So I'll just go to this book back, sheet one. And let me just create another graph to show you how to, you know, get the Gaussian fit for over a number of peaks at once. So what you need to do is basically just go ahead and select multiple peaks and then go to analysis, multiple peak fit, that is what we used last time. Okay, so Gaussian. Okay, select the peaks by double clicking on those. Open and lift, nonlinear fit. Okay, and then just fit them until they converge. Okay, now as you can see, the iterations keep on going and going, and they will probably go until 100, but I'll just go ahead and stop it right now. So, what you can see is that even after so many iterations, it just couldn't provide a fit for this third peak. So, maybe we should, you know, select the uh, peaks a little differently so maybe we can get you know these two peaks at once but not the third peak along with them so that is a common problem so it is usually advised to you know only take the most intense peaks for your um, you know for the analysis of crystallite size and as you could see that that peak the third peak was pretty much you know relatively really small compared to these two so there was some problem with that and here I, what I've done is I just pressed this and I got uh, you know the Gaussian fit for the two peaks at once and we can see that it is pretty good actually the blue curve if you see it is pretty much sim same or it is approximating the original data pretty good so the two FWHM for the two peaks are you know 0.199 and 0.21 okay so well that's it that's how you perform a gaussian fit for your peaks in your xrd data and get the fwhm and thus calculate the crystallite size using the formula that i just mentioned okay well hope you enjoyed this video and learned something from it and if you did don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel for more videos like this and thanks for watching and have a great day